SQL projects are now available in preview in Visual Studio. Learn all about SQL projects, how to get started, and some really interesting tips and tricks that are also new this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Drew, who is no stranger to Data Exposed. Drew, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Hey, Anna, thanks for having me back. <laughs> awesome to have you. Uh, Drew works in a lot of areas in the tools and experiences space for SQL, um, and one of those is SQL projects. And we're going to go right, get right into it. Uh, and I'd love to ask you, Drew, for folks who don't know what SQL projects are with regards to SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it and then what's new? Yeah. So SQL projects, they've been around for a while, but because they're unique to SQL Server and Azure SQL, there's a lot of people that just kind of miss out on one of these really cool features. What SQL projects are, are a collection of files where you can store your database definition in source control. That is great all on its own, but you get a life cycle that goes along with a SQL project. The first step here is the build into a DAC pack or a package for your database. That gives you something that's a little bit more portable, but when you take this and go to publish it, there's a whole lot of magic that goes behind the scenes. So I just like ripped the covers off of magic that you don't have to worry about. You can run a command line tool or use like Visual Studio or VS Code to hit publish on your package. And the tooling takes care of all of this for you. It's gonna look at the difference between a database and your SQL project and figure out what it needs to do to deploy it. You don't have to manage migration scripts. You don't have to figure out all the differences yourself and keep track of that. It's going to figure that out and give you a script to do your update, do your deployment. Awesome. That's great. So we can track changes and we can deploy changes and we can build locally and do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, cool. Awesome. So uh, you said this is available in... VS Code and Visual Studio. And I understand there's like an original SQL project and there's like this kind of newer one. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So with the kind of life cycle where you build your project and then deploy it, you've got what are known as declarative definitions. So I have a file for my table, each table, I've got a file for each store procedure. This is really convenient for the build and deploy. But in the original SQL projects, it got ugly really quickly when you had a large database. So this is what a SQL project file would look like for kind of a relatively small database, to be honest. This is AdventureWorks. And on the, the right side, you see lines 60 through 110. It's just a bunch of like, include this file, include this file, include this. The word we use for that beyond just being gross is being verbose. The SQL project file was very verbose. When we've moved now to in preview an SDK style SQL project, things get a lot simpler. By default, it includes every SQL file that's in that folder. So you don't have to worry about making sure that every table and every store procedure gets added. And so if you and I were to work on the same SQL project together, there wouldn't be any merge conflicts on the SQL project file, which is fantastic for teams that are looking to move fast and, and build quickly. That file uh, file format improvement is like one of the first things that's an improvement with the SDK style SQL projects. But this is this has been a long time coming. Um, I will be really candid that we've been working on SDK style SQL projects for a couple of years now. They've been in preview for a while. There's a lot that goes on with SQL projects, obviously. And so it's really cool now that we have them in preview in Visual Studio. So this is kind of hot off the presses. Uh, just, just this fall, we've added the, the preview in Visual Studio. I have How's a it? really simple one. <laughs> yeah. So I've got my, my SQL project file here in Visual Studio. We see the same really succinct file. We don't have a row for every one of these tables and views and stored procedures. We can use the same things we could use in the previous or original SQL projects like running code analysis. So if I right click on my project node and select build, 
it's going to give me some output as to how did my project build and it was already up to date so that was real quick but there are, there are two features within SQL projects that I want to make sure people know about today because we've introduced this uh, this kind of baseline of how you build and deploy SQL projects really quickly but there are there are two capabilities that are kind of important to understand how powerful it is as you start to dig down deeper. The first is the concept of SQL CMD variables. What, what this would mean would be, let's say I have a table for the brands in this Contoso Outdoors, and I want to add a column for the established year. And we're going to say this is int, and it's not null, and I have a default value. Maybe I think it's going to be 1900. But when I deploy this, let's say when I deploy this some years or in some environments, I want the default to be 2000 or I want the default to be 1998, whatever that is. If you want to determine that at deployment time, you can use a variable instead. So where we get that is it's, again, another piece of this kind of SQL project lifecycle where I can say, I want to insert a variable and I do not have to determine it while I'm building because that package is reusable. So I can build one SQL project and I can build it, check it into source control, store that package. And then if let's say I have a fleet of databases, I have a hundred databases and they're going to have a different value for this variable. I don't have to do anything else except for when I deploy it, say, this is what my variable is. So let's go back into Visual Studio. And when we open up the properties window, I can go to my SQL CMD variables and I'm going to make one for established year. I'll set a value in my, in my, my local environment for 1980. But whenever I deploy it, I do need to set this and I can use it in my code now. Make sure I got the name right, established year and established year. So when I go ahead and build this, even though that established year variable is unresolved, we haven't set it to anything except for in here, I set a default, but I can even remove the default just so everyone believes me and go ahead and build again. The build will run. We're probably going to get some code analysis feedback because I haven't written perfect code, but the build is going to succeed because we are using that SQL CMD variable. So nice. now we're kind of really leaning into the power of SQL projects and how they enable development both for teams as well as databases at scale where you have a whole fleet of databases. Cool. That's pretty amazing. And then when I, I'm guessing when I publish, that's when I would set this variable? Yep. So during that publish process, there's a flag um, with the V. So you do a backslash V and then give it the variable name. So we'd use a V colon established year mm -hmm. and then tell it this is the value I want to use. In environments like Visual Studio, we also in a publish dialog will be give, give prompted for, hey, go ahead and tell me what the value is. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. This is great. What else should folks think about in, in SQL projects? Yeah. The example that I used just a moment ago was a smaller database. There were a few objects. It was, it was, a, it was a nice introduction. But in the real world, sometimes our databases get big. Maybe you have multiple schemas with tons and tons of objects. Maybe when you're working with SQL Server, you want to be able to work with another database on the same server. So different database, same server. So you would use usually three-part naming to interact. Maybe you've got a store procedure that is a querying from a table that's in a different database. Even more complicated, maybe you're working with a database that has a linked server. So you're using four-part naming. Maybe you want to get away from it, but you haven't yet. And that's totally okay. SQL Projects is here for you. With SQL Projects, we have a concept called database references where I can add to my project references to either additional projects or DAC pack files that have already been built. If we lean into the 
kind of more simple case where you have the same database, but you just have more objects. Uh, I'm building, again, that fleet of databases. Every single database has the same set of base objects, and then I have additional ones on top of it. I would be able to reference a SQL project with my base objects and then add more on top of that. So adding database references gives me reusability within my SQL projects. This is part of the original SQL projects. This is not brand new. Um, the difficulty with database references is that you are responsible for moving the files around. When I check my SQL project into source control, it has to have access to the other SQL project or the DAC pack, my database references. That was a little complicated. And so we're improving it with SDK style SQL projects to say that you can reference NuGet packages that are available on package feeds. So if you go to NuGet.org, this is where a lot of .NET projects have shipped their libraries for reuse. In fact, there is a library for SQL projects that is available if you want to build your own customizations with SQL projects. This concept now applies to databases. You can ship components of your database as a package that can be reused throughout your organization, put it on a private feed, and then work from it from there. So this is kind of giving you that convenience of shipping at scale, but also with um, a little bit of disconnect from where the uh, objects are stored. Awesome. That's great. Is it hard to set that up? It, there is a process to creating your package where instead of as part of the life cycle, we think, oh, I want to deploy the database. Instead of deploying the database, you would take your DAC pack and package it up into a NuGet package. It's just a DAC pack inside of it. Um, this also really leans into the fact that now with the SDK style SQL projects, you're fully cross-platform. So you could be doing this on a Windows automated environment or on a Linux automated environment, which is where a lot of these uh, packages are created. The the use of the package, once it's created, that's your major hurdle. Using it, it does get a lot easier. Also, with the, with the ease of use coming for NuGet packages, the reason why I love that question so much is because it shows why we decided to also start distributing system databases as NuGet packages. Right now, let's say you want to reference a, a view out of master. For the master database, you can use that DAC pack from either Visual Studio or um, from grabbing that DAC pack yourself out of your SQL server. But you can actually use that. Let's show it off in VS Code. You can use that as a package reference in your SQL project. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment my DAC pack reference. This package reference include to master is going to allow us to determine that, hey, now I have a stored procedure and I can reach out to my currently executing con connections view and have this as a part of my, store, my uh, SQL project. The next time I build the SQL project, it's going to include a stored procedure to get active connections, selecting columns from master, and it's going to be able to validate these relationships. Because SQL projects do this build process, they are validating, do these columns exist? Not only checking is the syntax valid, but do these relationships exist? So this time we built, we just got a, a quick warning that, hey, I'm using a select star statement, shame on me. But if we go back to the SQL project and I comment this back out, and then we do another build, it's going to give us a ton of warnings because I'm referencing columns that it doesn't know about. It can't validate them. So I'm kind of run, running with scissors. And so SQL Projects wants to protect us. And now with the power of package references in the SDK, I can very easily reference, in this case, system DAC packs, but you can package up any of your database components and ship them that way for use in your organization. Wow, this is awesome. I mean, huge improvements kind of across the board, Drew. Uh, for folks who are just getting started, do you have any final tips and tricks? 
Yes, absolutely. You can start from either VS Code or Visual Studio Community, both of which are completely free to use with SQL projects. Um, if you grab the Visual Studio Preview, you can get started with SQL projects there. Head on over to aka.ms slash SQL projects, and there's a couple tutorials as well as an introduction to different and more concepts in SQL projects. So you can start from an existing database or a new one however you want to get started. Um, but go ahead and check out the documentation because that'll let you start with whatever tool you want to. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Drew, for coming on the show. Personally, I learned a lot. I'm sure our viewers did as well. Uh, if you're watching this episode and you want to learn more, we'll put a link that uh, Drew mentioned in the description for you to go learn more and read the awesome docs that I know Drew has worked really hard to make this more easy to understand for folks. Uh, if you like this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think and any feedback you might have. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.